Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good. Today, we will discuss about the sodium potassium pump and its importance. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Talking about the sodium potassium pump, it is a mode of primary active transport of ions in and out of the cell membrane. It transports sodium ions outwards and at the same time pumps the potassium ions inside keeping the ion concentration differences across the cell membrane. Discussing about the structure of the sodium potassium pump. It consists of a carrier protein which has two subunits. An alpha subunit and a beta subunit. The alpha subunit is larger with a molecular weight of 100,000 and the beta subunit is smaller with a molecular weight of 55,000. So these subunits have different significance. Let's discuss the binding sites on the larger subunit. There are three binding sites for sodium ions on the portion of the protein which protrudes to the inside of the cell. There are two binding sites for potassium ions on the portion of the protein that faces outside. Near the sodium binding sites that are present on the portion of the protein that protrudes inside, there is ATPase activity that is adenosine triphosphatase and it is present to provide energy for the pump. Now let's have a look at this pump to see the sites and the ATPase. This is the sodium potassium pump and as you can see this area of the protein that protrudes to the inside of the cell we have three binding sites for sodium ions. This area of the protein which faces to the exterior has two binding sites for potassium ions and as we discussed there is ATPase activity near the sodium binding sites. So this is the ATPase. We have discussed the structure of the pump. Now let's talk about the mechanism of how it works. When two potassium ions bind on the outside of the carrier protein and three sodium ions bind on the inside, the ATPase function of the protein becomes activated. This activation of ATPase function leads to the cleavage of one molecule of ATP to ADP adenosine diphosphate. The phosphate bond which is broken is a high energy bond which liberates energy. And this liberated energy is then believed to cause a conformational change. And then three sodium ions are transported out and two potassium ions are transported inside the cell. As you can see, Three sodium ions attach on the inner side of the protein and two potassium ions attach to the exterior. Then the ATPase converts ATP into ADP and a phosphate bond is broken. This phosphate bond is a high energy bond which helps the pump to perform its function. Now comes the question what is the importance of this pump? Talking about its importance. One of the most important functions of this sodium potassium pump is to control the cell volume. Without this function, the cell would swell until they burst. The next question which arises is how does it control the cell volume? So in order to answer that, we need to see its mechanism of controlling the cell volume. Inside the cell, there are large number of proteins and other organic molecules that cannot escape from the cell. These all are negatively charged and attract other positively charged ions like sodium, potassium, etc. So all these ions then cause osmosis of water inside the cell. Unless the sodium potassium pump functions, the cell will swell until it bursts. So when it transports 3 sodium ions outside or 2 potassium ions inside the cell, this initiates the osmosis of water outside the cell, maintaining the cell volume. Electrogenic Nature Another importance of sodium potassium pump is to re-establishing the resting membrane potential. The mechanism is very simple. As we know, the pump transports 3 sodium ions out for 2 potassium ions inside the cell. This results in a loss of one positive charge from the interior of the cell. And this causes the negativity in the cell. So that is it for today guys, I hope you understood today's topic. 
Don't forget to subscribe the channel and also follow us on Instagram. See you guys in the next one.